Hey, what up, fellas? Time is running out right now. Christmas is coming up quick. So maybe you need to get some last minute gifts or you're gonna have some money from grandma after Christmas hits and uh, you wanna get some good fishing products. Now, a lot of the things we are gonna get into is just pure fishing gear, but I also have some very interesting things that you definitely wouldn't think of. Now, a lot of fishing products are super subjective, but I'm gonna give you what I've been liking and what I know are some really good products. Now, let's just get into it with some fishing lures, starting off with some inshore lures and then moving on to the jetties. It's the time of year right now, so you know we have to start off with the Corky Fat Boy. And I'm telling you right now, there's very, very few people who don't want a couple more of these guys. Along the Texas coast, it's one of the very most legendary baits for some big old speckled trout. They're proven to work, and man, the cool thing about corgis is you can always learn more, and there's so many ways to work them. Not only is it a good bait, it's a really fun bait to learn how to use. As for colors of corgis, some of my favorites are pink pearl, pearl chartreuse, and also that guy. The black and orange roach looking color for a little bit dirtier water, and even in clear water, I've caught some big fish on this. If you wanna get even more in depth with corgis, get some different colors, they even make custom corkies and custom corky colors. You can find some of these custom corkies in tackle shops, but also I believe they're available on the Waterloo online shop. Probably my number one favorite corky color is the gringo. It's basically just an all white color. But some of my other favorite colors are the plum nasty and that guy the pistachio for a little bit clearer water. Trust me, no one's gonna be turning down some free corkies. Next up, we got another Texas classic, the Down South Lures. There's the 4.5 inch Southern Shad, which are a little bit smaller. And we also have the five inch supermodel that's a little bit bigger. I love the smaller 4.5 inch just as a search bait because I feel like just about everything is gonna eat it, trout and redfish, even flounder. And if I'm looking for a little bit bigger bait, I'm going with the five inch supermodel, especially for some speckled trout. Favorite color down south lures is the classic chicken of the sea, which we have right here. But I also like the purple rain color, bone diamond, and the classic plum and chartreuse, especially for those bigger supermodel. Now we got these little guys right there, the DOA shrimp. In short, this is my go-to lure under the popping cork. Everything that sees this is pretty much gonna eat it up. And I also definitely use these guys at the jetty as well for some trout. And even this year, I happened to catch a nice little tarpon on a DOA shrimp. So I'm telling you, everything likes to eat the shrimp. Easily my favorite color right there in a little bit clear water is the near clear DOA shrimp. I also like the gold glitter, which is also a pretty clear color. And I this is the guy I caught the tarpon on. And then if the water's a little bit dirtier, I'm going with the root beer or maybe even the, the pure chartreuse. And that is a very bright lure. Next soft plastic we have is the Salt Strong 3.5 inch paddle tail. And similar to the down south lure and also the DOA shrimp, if something sees that guy right there, it's definitely gonna eat it up. And this whole year, partly into last year, I've been loving these lighter colors like this, the Slam Shady color, my favorite color of this bait as well. I'm using this smaller lure when I'm sight casting some reds or I'm just looking for fish, like a search bait. If you do wanna get some of these guys, make sure to check the link in the description and you'll definitely get a really, really good deal on them. Now, another lure I rediscovered this year is the spinner bait. First used the spinner bait in salt water about four or five years ago and I kinda killed it the one time I did use them and then the next several years, I never used them again until this year. And man, that guy right there is, it has to be my number one redfish bait right now. You can use pretty much any spinner bait you want for redfish, but what I've been using the Strike King Redfish Magic, it's, it's a pretty cheap bait and it has the arm that can come off, snap on, snap off. And that just lets you change out the jig head. It does come with soft plastic. Not my favorite soft plastic on here, but you can switch it out to whatever you want. Absolutely no way I'm skipping the top waters. And I've used a lot of top waters, but the one I keep coming back to every time is the Hedden Spook series. My number one top water all time, the Hedden Super Spook Junior. This is another lure right here. Even though it's a top water, I feel like it's one of those lures that if a fish sees it, I, I just feel like it's gonna go for it a lot of the time. Sometimes they might just nip at it, but you will know the fish are there. And if you want a little bit bigger presentation, I'm going with the Super Spook. These two colors right here, my favorite colors, the bone color, absolute classic, and it just catches fish. And then of course the chrome. Just like the spinnerbait, another lure I've rediscovered this year, the nothing lure as I like to call it, is the Little John. I used it several years in the past, put it down, and then this year I picked it up again and it's been killing it for me. No paddle on this bait, so it's just a straight tail. And I do use this a little bit different than the other soft plastics I was talking about. What I like to use this lure for is when there's not too much grass. So a lot of times what that means is I'm fishing sand at the jetties in close in the surf right there. And also just, just sandbars that occur inshore and look at that guy it is what i call the nothing lure but because it is the nothing lure that could look like anything that looks like a little bait fish that could be a shrimp and since this is a smaller straight tail lure i like to use it pretty much 
exclusively in some clear water. That means I'm using some lighter colors. My two favorites right here. We've got the glow gold glitter and also the opening night right there. You throw this in some super clear water and it's still gonna look pretty realistic. A lot of other lures, even if they are in a natural color, you throw them in some super clear water and you look at them, they stick out like a sore thumb. Then you see a mullet swim by and you can barely see that mullet, even though it's in super clear water. And these guys don't really stick out like a sore thumb, especially in these two colors. And I think that is a good thing in that clear water. And that's why I love these guys, especially over sand. Time for some jetty lures, and you know we had to start off with one of the most versatile lures right there, the three ounce thick boy spoon. Any of the big fish you're gonna find around the jetties, redfish, jacks, kingfish, they're gonna eat up one of these guys right here. Especially those reds and jacks, they absolutely love the spoon. If you are going to get some of these big spoons in, you're going to be bouncing the bottom for some redfish. I recommend getting more than one or two. And where I get these is on Amazon. I just search up three ounce fishing spoon and I just choose whichever one is the, the best deal. They, they're all pretty much the same. Now the brand you find a lot of these three ounce spoons in stores is the Sea Striker brand. If you do end up getting those, you definitely want to get some different split rings and hooks. You could You can literally pull the hook right off of there just with your own power if you get those sea striker ones. If you are looking for these three ounce spoons, I recommend getting one that already has the split ring up front. They can be hard to put on a split ring and you definitely want it because they're so thick up here. If you tie a knot, a lot of knots are not gonna hold up too well at the front right there. The Rapala X-Wrap 14 Long Cast. This is pretty much my dedicated go-to kingfish lure from the jetties. You can also catch jacks on them sometimes. Sometimes jacks actually don't wanna hit them, but these guys, are pretty pretty freaking killer for kingfish if the kingfish happen to be at the jetties which they're usually not but i'm definitely always bringing these guys just on the off chance there are some kingfish if you are buying some of these extra 14s make sure they say the long cast version especially if you're not just trolling them and you are casting them my two favorite colors which actually is not this color right here are the glass ghost x wraps and also just the, the original silver color. Some more kingfish killers we have for the jetties right here is the Halco Max 110 and the bigger 130. This bigger 130 casts like a bullet, man. My two go-to colors for the Halco Maxes are this color right here, Bonito, and also the King Brown color is pretty good for some kingfish. Let's go for some rods and reels. It's gonna be a short list, and that's because I'm obviously not sponsored by any of these guys, and I don't have the money to try every rod and reel on the market. I'm just gonna tell you kind of what I like. Starting off with inshore bait casters, my number one favorite reel of all time is the Luz Custom Light. It doesn't look like anything too special, but why I love this thing is it is super light. It is 4.9 ounces. A lot of bait casters on the market, especially saltwater bait casters, are made to hold kind of way too much line, especially when you're using braid, and that makes them a lot bigger in the hand. Now this is not a dedicated saltwater bait caster, but with bait casters, because there is no sealed bait caster, and inevitably there's gonna be water getting in there, but this guy has been pretty robust for me, even the way I treat things, which is not too well, and they usually don't last that long for me, even, even the ones that are dedicated for saltwater. The way this feels, casts, and works, it just feels super balanced, and it. If you have something that feels super balanced, it, it's just fun to cast and uh, it makes fishing pretty fun, even if you're not casting too much stuff. It doesn't happen too much for me, you know? Another similar bait caster is the Luz Custom Pro and that is a 5.8 ounce, so still a pretty light bait caster, but it is a bait caster that I've not used too much, but I do know a lot of very good inshore anglers that like the reel a lot. It's a touch cheaper, it looks different, and it has uh, different handles, I believe, and it should be a a little bit more robust. And now for a newer reel, the Shimano Tranks 150. This is a reel designed specifically for some Texas inshore saltwater fishing. I've heard a ton of good things about it. It is at a more reasonable price and I think a ton of saltwater anglers are really gonna like this reel. I might have to get one myself to be honest with you. And finally for a little bit cheaper option is the Luz Speed Spool Inshore. Nothing crazy about this reel. It is made for saltwater and it, it will just get the job done. And now for the inshore rod that makes up my favorite combo of all time. The, the combo that feels very balanced with this Luz Custom Light. It is the Waterloo Salinity, specifically seven foot, medium light, moderate fast. And like I said, these two together, it makes fishing a lot of fun. A lot of fun casting these guys. I love this thing for speckled trout, some big old speckled trout, and I even use it for some redfish, of course. But it will handle those slot and even a little bit bigger redfish just fine. And man, the setup's just fun. It's just fun to use, fits well in the hand and it feels good. In the same vein, we have the Waterloo Phantom. It is similar, but it has these EVA grips, which some people actually prefer over the cork. I like the cork, 
but there's nothing wrong with the EVA either. And it is a little bit cheaper option. Now we're moving on to the bigger setups for some jetty fishing. Starting off with the reels, my favorite jetty fishing reel and also near shore, the Pin Slammer 3. The Slammer 3 is a generation old by now, but what I loved about this was it, it was a pretty much a fully sealed reel that was finally available for a reasonable price, not a $700 $800 van stall and let me tell you something about this. I've I've never cleaned it ever and it's been through some stuff So I would say if you can find one of these guys under $200 That's a pretty good deal one time it was on on sale for about 175 on Amazon And I definitely should have picked up a couple more back then This is the 5500 pin slammer 3 and I think that is the perfect size for some jetty fishing unless you're getting into some monster sharks or some absolutely monster tarpon this is going to handle pretty much everything but there also is the pin slimer 4 i have not tried it but i'm sure it is just an upgrade over this reel and if they were similar prices i would definitely go with the slimer 4. now some people just don't like pin reels and if you are one of those guys i would recommend the shimano saragosa similar price range probably a little bit more than the pin but with the saragosa and shimano in general you're gonna get a very, very smooth reel. And that's something Pin is not known for, is being super smooth. For me, it doesn't matter too much. I don't really care about that. But a lot of people do care about the smoothness and with the Shimano, that's what you're gonna get. Benefits of the Shimano is you're gonna get a high-tech reel that is super smooth. Uh, some of the cons are, it can be a lot more complicated to open up and clean, especially um, with that anti-reverse. There's one time I opened up a Shimano reel and, and I had to work on the anti-reverse and it was a lot of, weird moving parts that once you kind of unscrew it stuff kind of goes flying everywhere and that is one benefit of the pen it is a relatively a very simple reel compared to the shimano nowadays you better be using some braid for your main line my go-to braid right now and for a while is this daiwa j braid reasonably priced braid and it just works really well if you are jetty fishing especially do not buy the cheapest braid you can find on ebay or amazon that's really going to sap your casting distance and that's one of the worst things you can do for jetty fishing i recommend 40 to 50 pound braid for jetty fishing and i like 20 pound braid for inshore 20 to 30 for inshore as for the jetty fishing rods, I don't have too much to say to that because I usually look for something different than most other people look for. I like a pretty stiff rod that basically just casts super far. I don't really care how much it weighs. And that's why I've been using this, the Pin Carnage 10 footer. But my recommendations for a jetty rod are have it be at least nine foot, 10 foot on the high end, I would say. And it has to be able to cast at least three ounces for that three ounce spoon. Now let's get into some of that stuff that you may not have thought of off the rip. First up for weight fishing, I have Bart's Bay Armor Wading Boots. These are Stingray resistant boots and there's Stingrays everywhere, but there's some spots that just have tons of Stingrays. And every time I'm going to those spots, I'm wearing these 100% of the time because one time I was wading in one of these spots and I got stuck by Stingray. Luckily, I was wearing these exact boots. Now these are not plate armor boots, so I think a Stingray, if it hits you just right, and if it was a big enough, powerful enough Stingray, it could get through. But let me tell you, it's a lot better than nothing. And the good thing about them is they're super comfortable, as comfortable as any other wading boot. And that's what I really like about them. Now I got one for you that I used to be really against, and it's one of these guys right here, a watch. I used to think, you know, we have phones. We have phones everywhere we go. What's the point of wearing a watch? Well, obviously we're fishing around salt water. We don't want to get salt water on our phones. And a lot of times we have it in our bag or in an ice chest somewhere. And it's kind of important to be able to know the time right off the rip when you're fishing. Things like sunrise and sunset, not to mention minors and majors. Finally, getting and wearing a watch is one of the best things I did for my fishing. I personally like the G-Shock series. They're super rugged, super waterproof. And if you are gonna be fishing with a watch, you wanna make sure it is waterproof. Now, if you want kind of a cool watch that is super cheap, you can get the Casio fishing watches. You can actually set them to where you can see the minors and majors and when there should or should not be fish. Definitely not super necessary, but it is kind of cool to look at and they're super cheap, so why not? Now we have some ways to grip fish and I think it's something that everyone should have, especially on the jetties, you should have one of these guys right here. Having some fish grips is gonna be better for your safety, but also for the fish, there's gonna be a lot less dropped fish, especially when you're trying to handle some really big jacks, bull redfish, stuff of that nature. You get that right past their lip, bang, and you got them. Way better for controlling the fish and also there's not gonna be hooks flying everywhere. I like the fish grips because they're very light and they're pretty cheap. Now, if you're gonna be fishing inshore and you wanna catch some big trout and big reds inshore and to know exactly what you caught, I like using a boga grip because they have very accurate scales on them, spring scales, and they're super durable. Even when you're wade fishing every day and they're just hanging in that salt water, still super durable. If you're a big wade fishing trout guy, you kinda, you kinda have to have one. 
Now to go along with that boga grip and weight fishing, something super cheap and super nice you can get is the rod ruler. It's just a little adhesive ruler that goes right on your rod and you can just measure that fish when you're weight fishing. Super nice, especially when you're keeping fish or maybe you caught a PB when you're 200 yards from the boat. Finally, something that someone recommended to me a long time ago on one of my videos was a fish flaying table. Something actually like this. They're plastic tables you can get on Amazon and they make fish cleaning a lot easier. Listen, I used to have a flay board just on the ground, but once I got this table, having it be able to stand up and work on that fish, it made it a ton easier. Now I'm not the biggest reader in the whole world, but Something I do love is some local fishing books. My favorite fishing book of all time is World Class Texas Trout Tomorrow by L. Scott Murray. If you're a Texas trout fisherman and you can get your hands on this book, I guarantee you're gonna absolutely love it. It's not really a narrative book. It's about a ton of legendary trout fishermen. You, you'll be surprised about how many guys that you'll know in this book. Legendary Texas trout fishermen, and they just tell their stories of their big, biggest trout or their favorite trout. And you can actually learn a lot from it. It doesn't put all the pieces together, but if you're smart, you can cross-reference things and you can actually learn a lot from it. A couple more books I like from the Texas coast. These are more basic books. They're gonna start off with basics and they do get into different bay systems up and down the Texas coast. First up, we have the Pocket Guide to Speckled Trout and Redfish, the South Texas Coast edition. And then we have Fishing Magic, the Texas Coast, Roland Carroll. These books are pretty similar and both good. They start off with the basic stuff that I definitely can still learn about. And they also get into different bay systems and specifics of good ways to fish them. And then we got one more thing. If you're on the Texas coast and you fish kayak or in boats inshore, you're definitely gonna want one of these guys. You, you should have one. The hook and line maps. These are available for whatever base system you're in and they give you ton, tons of spots around the base systems. Now obviously these maps are not gonna give you all the secrets and put you on the fish instantly. But if you're new to your area or even if you've been fishing the area for a while, these give you some great ideas for some new spots to try out. Well, that's all I got for you fellas. Don't disregard the books, all right? There's some good knowledge in here. Wish you guys happy holidays and I hope, I hope it doesn't freeze too bad coming up in this next week. We should be all right. I love you guys very much. We'll talk to you guys next time. Now let's get, now let's, now let's get into some of that weirder. Now some of the, now let's get into that summer stuff. Now let, now let's get into that. I personally like the G-Sock. I personally, I personally like the G-Sock. God, I cannot say this. <laughs>